Circuit Pythonistas, it's Prof G, and in this lesson, we'll learn about Circuit Python libraries and how they can extend what we can do in Python. We'll use some example code, and we'll install a tool called Circup, which can be a huge help in managing libraries on our board. Now, this does require a bit of setup, which can be frustrating if you just want to jump into coding, but trust me, this is a useful thing to learn, and it's going to remove a lot of frustration that earlier students have experienced. And we will get some code up and running on our Circuit Playground board as part of this lesson. If you're brand new and you haven't set up your board yet, start with the first video in the playlist for your board. And if you share my work with others, thanks for helping out. Now let's talk libraries. So libraries, or modules, you'll sometimes hear these terms used interchangeably, are ways to extend the Python programming language. Standard Python doesn't know how to work with light sensors, buttons, or the other types of hardware that we use in this course. So if it helps, you can consider libraries sort of like adding new vocabulary to Python so that we can get new Python statements that do new stuff. Now, engineers of the Adafruit Corporation have developed and maintained over 900 open source libraries for CircuitPython. CircuitPython works with a ton of additional hardware, but the libraries are so big that all of them wouldn't fit on most boards. The memory on most microcontrollers is pretty small. But you can visit circuitpython.org and download all of the libraries, plus hundreds of sample code examples showing you how to use them. Also, in addition to the hundreds of libraries engineers at Adafruit have created and maintained, there are hundreds more developed and maintained by volunteers in something called the Community Library. So you drag a library on your board, and you extend what CircuitPython can do, like work with lights, play sounds, recognize sensors. And libraries are great. They mean there's an almost infinite amount of expansion that can be added to the CircuitPython language, but adding and upgrading library files manually can be a real pain. It's error-prone, files you might need aren't obvious, it can be tough to find what you need among the hundreds of files that are available, and working with libraries has been a frustration for lots of my former students. But fortunately, there's a great utility that we can use that will make working with libraries much easier, and it's called CircUp. You use CircUp to install library files on your board, and it will also upgrade any files if new versions are available, and it'll even look at your Python code and install any additional files that that code needs to run. Shout out to Nicholas Tolerve, CircUp's creator. It's free open source and now lives on the Adafruit GitHub pages. So first up, I want to show you how we can use CircUp to install libraries needed by the code on our board. So we're going to put some Adafruit example code on our board to see how this works. So follow along with me. We're going to find and download the latest library bundle. I'll show you how you can find example code. We'll explore the examples folder and we'll load some example code on our board. We'll note that the code does not run because we don't have any libraries installed on our board yet. So we'll install CircUp, which requires a few steps, but it's definitely worth it. And we'll only have to do those once. And then we'll use CircUp to look at our example code and automatically install all the libraries we need to our board's LIB folder. Let's start by downloading the libraries bundle so that we can get some example code and put an example on our board. Now to make sure you get the same results as me, my students probably are using boards that have been used by other students, let's start with an empty libraries folder. Plug in your board, it'll show up on your computer as CircuitPy, go into the LIB folder and delete anything that's in there. Now once again, let's open a browser and return to circuitpython.org. And this time we're gonna click on libraries in the tab at the top and scroll down until you find the bundle section and you wanna download the bundle that matches the version of Python that you just installed on your board. Now my version was a version of Python 9, so I'm gonna click on this purple button for bundle version 9.x. If you've got a higher number and installed a higher number, use that. Your version will probably save to your downloads folder, but I configured my browser to allow me to save it to the desktop. Then find the folder that you just downloaded. It should have a name something like Adafruit-CircuitPython-Bundle. If it's still a .zip file, double click that to unzip it. Then open the folder up and let's take a look at what's inside. Now we see a few things in here. First, there are examples. Let's open up that folder, and there are a lot of examples. The libraries are usually named with the name of the hardware that they enable. Now, unfortunately, most products are named by hardware engineers, not marketers, so they have terrible alphanumeric names. But if we scroll down, we can see there's a folder named Circuit Playground. Now, this contains all sorts of examples using the various lights, sensors, and other features that are built into the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and the Circuit Playground Express. So let's go in this folder, and I'm gonna turn on the columns format for the Finder window. This shows how we got here from the bundle folder to examples and then into circuit playground. And I'm also gonna adjust the column width so that you can see things a bit better. And you'll see lots of files mentioning things like buttons, NeoPixels, shake, temperature. And the one that I wanna use is this one here, circuit playground, touch, pixel, fill, 
rainbow. If I click this file once, I can see a preview of the code in the rightmost column, and we see that it says that this example uses the touch pads on the circuit playground, so it recognizes touch, and this example lights up all of the NeoPixels in a different color of the rainbow for each pad touched. That sounds super cool, so let's use this example. Now, as stated, CircuitPython will try to execute any file on your CircuitPy board that's named code.py. Now we don't have to type a run command or anything, just plug the board in or reset it and code.py will run again. It doesn't even have to be connected to a computer. You just have to power it so you can plug it into a standard USB port or even run it off of a mobile phone battery. So I'm gonna open the CircuitPy volume, this is our board, and we've already got a code.py file on here, but I'm gonna grab my Circuit Playground Touch Pixel Fill Rainbow file. Make sure you select the right one. There are a couple of other files that have similar names. And I'm gonna drag this right onto my CircuitPy volume so it copies onto my board. Make sure it's at the base level of your board and not inside of your LIB folder. If you have a reason to save this code.py file, you can drag it onto your computer as a backup. If not, just throw it in the trash like I'm doing. And I'll rename the file I just copied over so that it's now called code.py, all lowercase. So now I've got the example file on my board. It has that code.py name, so it should run but my code doesn't do anything yet. Just a quick intro to the lights that you're gonna see on your CPB. When you first plug in your CPB or you reset it and everything's working, you'll see all the lights flash in yellow for about a second. And since this is a Bluetooth board, you'll also see blue lights flash even faster. Now the lights will also show other things that are happening on the board. And if your board flashes twice in red and repeats this every five seconds, there's a problem. This red flash also happens if you save your code, but there's an error in your code. Now, the reason we're getting a red flash now is that the code that's on our board requires libraries, but our LIB folder is empty. Now, we haven't actually looked at any code yet, so I don't expect new students to know about this, but we'll eventually learn that this line here that says from Adafruit Circuit Playground import means that the code is expecting the Circuit Playground library to be imported, and our code is expecting to find that library in the LIB folder on our board. But it's even trickier because the Circuit Playground library itself also uses other support libraries that aren't explicitly stated in this import statement. In fact, I've put a list up on the screen that shows all of the libraries that you need to import before this sample will work. That can be tricky, but CircUp has got your back. We'll see that after we install CircUp, all we'll need to do is simply type in a single command and CircUp will identify all the libraries we need, find them stored on the internet, and load them up onto our board. It's awesome. Now, if you have the list of libraries that you need, you can drag them over one by one from that LIB folder that's inside the bundle that we just downloaded, but that requires that you know which libraries you need, what their names are, and you have to drag them all over one by one. It's time consuming, lots of errors can occur. That's why we use CircUp. It takes care of all of this. So let's install CircUp so we don't have to worry about the manual library install. Now, there are a few things we need to make sure that your computer, not your board, has installed before we can install CircUp. First, your computer needs a version of Python. I believe it's version 3.8 or greater. We also need Git installed. Git is a tool that your computer uses for version control. We don't need to know about the specifics of Git to use CircUp, but we do need to have it on our computers. And we need to install something called PIP. PIP installs and manages software packages. We don't need to know how to use PIP, but we do need it for CircUp. Now, there is a detailed learn guide online that Melissa LeBlanc Williams had created. It provides a written guide if you need it. There are lots of great details in here. Thank you, Melissa and Adafruit. I did stumble a bit when setting this up, so I've added additional context in here that I hope helps any newbies. I'll demonstrate the install on my Mac. Definitely consult the learn guide if you're not on a Mac and you run into problems. You can also ask questions on Adafruit's Discord. I'll show examples of the three most useful CircUp commands, but feel free to consult the learn guide if you want to learn more. Now we'll use the terminal to install and use CircUp. Terminal is text-based. It doesn't have a nice graphical user interface, but CircUp is much faster and is so much better at making sure that your boards are updated that CircUp up really is worth learning to use, even if you're a newbie. So we'll install using Terminal. We can launch Terminal on the Mac with Spotlight by pressing Command Space, then typing Terminal, press Return, and Terminal will launch. Command Plus will make the font larger if you need it. Command Minus will shrink it. And in Terminal, we enter the commands after the percentage sign and press Return. To check if Python is installed and what version you've got, enter the command Python3 space dash dash version, all lowercase, press return. Either you'll get a message you don't have Python installed or you'll get the version number. Head to python.org and click download. And if this number is larger than your Python's number, you can upgrade. Just download and open the file on your computer and follow the install instructions. I just installed Python for the upgrade, and as a pro tip, you can repeat the last command that you entered in the terminal by pressing the up arrow key on the keyboard, press return to execute version again. I had the latest version when I recorded this, but your number likely changed.
Now all Mac users should have Git installed and you shouldn't have to worry about upgrading Git, but if you're curious, you can check with the terminal command git space dash dash version and press return. Next, we have to make sure that we have pip3 installed. Pip3 is a program that installs other programs. Now Python should have installed it. We can verify this and upgrade pip3 if we need to. You should enter pip3, that's P-I-P-3, space install, space dash dash upgrade, space pip, all lowercase, press return. My result says requirements satisfied. If you needed pip3, you'll see install messages while it's installing. And again, if you're on Windows, check the Adafruit Learn Guide for CircUp to see if these instructions differ for you. Next, we have to make sure that pip3 setup tools are installed. And to do that, enter pip3 space install space setup tools. Setup tools is one word. Press return. They're likely installed, but if not, you'll see some install messages. And now we're ready to install CircUp. And to do this, enter the command pip3 space install space CircUp. Remember that's C-I-R-C-U-P, all lowercase, press return. Now I have a quick update here from an earlier version of this lesson. Try entering the following command at this point, CircUp space dash dash version. And if you get back a message listing the CircUp version number, bravo and congratulations, you've properly installed CircUp. But I've seen situations where sometimes you enter the command and you get back a message that says command not found circup. And if that happens, the installation above probably installed something that doesn't take effect until your computer is completely restarted. So if you get that message, restart your computer, reopen your terminal and try typing circup space dash dash version and it should work. If not, try repeating all the installation steps that we previously did and restarting your computer one more time. If you got here, congratulations, you've just installed CircUp, and you shouldn't have to repeat these steps again. Now to show you CircUp in action and prove to you that it is installing libraries on our CircuitPy board's LIB folder, I'm going to open my CircuitPy board and open the LIB folder. It's currently empty, so let's get back into Terminal so we can use CircUp. Remember, on the Mac, that's Command Space to bring up Spotlight. Type Terminal, press Return, and I'm going to resize things so you can see my screen and the Finder window. And then this is the command we're going to enter. CircUp space install space dash lowercase a press return to initiate the awesomeness and what's happening here is circup looks inside the code.py file on your board that's in circuit by the code says it needs to import the library adafruit underscore circuit playground but circup also knows this library depends that's what the word dependency here means on these following libraries so it cooked along and installed these one by one and behold the majesty in your lib folder that was previously empty now it has all of these libraries automatically installed based on one simple command. You didn't even have to know what you needed. Fantastic. Now let's check out that sample code. And as is sometimes the case, the table and my home lab has been annexed by one of my cats. This is Admiral Grace Hopper. She's named after one of the greatest computer scientists of all time. You can look her up online. Yale University has an entire college named after her. So this program on our CPB will run fresh if I press the reset button right in the center here. And when I do this, code.py will run from scratch. We don't have to do this, but I want to point out that that's what a single press of the reset button does. So if you ever want to restart your program, reset will do it. Once I press the reset button, the board startup lights flash, yellow first, then blue, since this is a blue fruit board, and all looks good. We're not getting that double flash of red error indicator that we had before. So let's give this a shot. A1 red. A2 orange, A3 yellow. There's green, light blue, blue, and a sort of purplish pink. And you can slide your finger around the side and notice the change. Look at that. And we can also press the reset button to start again. The lights all shut off and then we can touch again. We see the different colors. Very nice. Now, before we finish this lesson, I do want to show you two more CircUp commands that are going to be very helpful to you. This first command will let us install libraries one at a time, because sometimes you know what library you want to install before you write your code.py file. The command is just circup install in the name of your library. In each tutorial, I should mention the name of any libraries you need, but you can usually find the name of the library that you need in the learn guide for that product at adafruit.com. 
So here I'm installing the library for the VL5131X distance sensor. Again, not a very friendly name, but we're going to be using this in a future lecture. Now I'll remind you in this lesson, but this learn guide tells me that my LIB folder needs to have Adafruit bus device. That's going to be installed automatically. When we install, this is the one we need, Adafruit underscore VL53L1X. You don't use the .mpy for the library name, just the part before the dot. You don't need to install this now, but feel free to try the command if you want. It's just circup install, and again, the name of the sensor's library. That's Adafruit underscore VL53L1X, all lowercase. Press return, and the terminal shows that it's installed, and I can see the new library in my CircuitPy board's live folder. Nice. Now this last example is for updating any libraries in your board's LIB folder, replacing them with newer versions if available. Now CircuitPy won't upgrade your CircuitPython version. You still have to go through the steps that we showed in an earlier lesson, where you visit circuitpython.org, download the UF2 file for your board, put your board in bootloader mode, and drag the UF2 file onto your board. But once you've upgraded CircuitPython, CircuitPy will take care of making sure that all of the libraries are up to date too. It's a huge time saver and only takes one command. So to show you how to use this command, I have a board with old library files on it. They're from about a year and a half before I recorded this video. If you're new, you likely don't have a board with old files. You can just return to this part of the lesson when you want to upgrade the libraries on your board. But if you want to follow along, feel free to download a set of old libraries on the Google Drive at this URL and drag them into the LIB folder on your CircuitPy volume if you'd like. Now this window in the finder is my CircuitPy board, and this is the LIB folder. And you can see the libraries here have old dates. Now I'm going to type in the command circ up space list. You don't have to use this command, but it provides a nice summary of the modules or libraries that are in your board's LIB folder, the current version installed, and what the latest version is. So now let's go ahead and update all this with the command that you do want to use. This is circ up space update space dash dash all all lowercase, press return, and you can see all these modules are updated, and you can see the dates have changed over in the finder. Nice. Now I've got one more important update. It seems a later update of Mac OS Sonoma, and I have no idea if this is fixed by the time you watch this lesson, but that slows down writing to boards that are plugged into the USB. It slows it down by like 40 times what it used to be. Now it's still not too long, but one thing that I recommend to avoid any problems is if you want to unplug your CircuitPy board, select eject first and then wait for the board icon to disappear. Now on the Mac, you can eject the board one of two ways. One is that you can either right click on the CircuitPy volume and select eject, or the other is you could just drag the CircuitPy volume into the trash. You see the trash icon turns into a big eject button, but if you do that either way, you should see the CircuitPy icon disappear, and when it disappears, then you can unplug your board. The problem is sometimes if you unplug your board while the system is writing to the board, then that could wipe out what's on the board, and you'll have to reinstall your lib folder, and you might lose what's in your code.py file. So remember to be safe, always eject your board when you're done using it, or when you want to unplug it and plug it back in. So hackers, you've now installed CircUp on your computer, so you should never have to do that again. You know the basic commands that are most useful. I've added one more command at the end of the crib sheet here, pip3 install dash dash upgrade CircUp. This upgrades the CircUp program if a new version is available, and that product is always being revised, so it's not a bad idea to run that before you run CircUp. And you are now ready to easily install and upgrade any CircuitPython libraries that your project needs. You are now most ready to continue to hack.